YouTube, what is up? It's your boy Koozie, and welcome back to Phasmophobia. We've got another guide for you today, baby. And in this one, what I want to do is I want to cover all 24 ghosts. But before you click away, all right, this is not going to be a two hour long video. Instead of going super in depth, I want to give you every single ghost and how to easily identify them and or rule them out. Uh, my game is frozen, so that's great. Game is going to crash. I think it's going to... Okay, it's not going to crash, all right? Um, so what I want to do is I'm actually just going to grab a smudge stick and um, a lighter because we are going to do the contract, but I want to get through the ghost first because this this hopefully won't take very long. Oh, uh, we have the mirror. That'll be good. Let's use that. Uh, it's the dining room. So maybe it is a thay and we'll sit here in the ghost room. I'm actually going to go chill in the garage because the ghost starts to hunt in the ghost room, by the way, in case you didn't know that. All right. So the easiest way to identify a spirit, if you smudge it and it doesn't hunt for three minutes, every other ghost minus a demon, which I'll get to that here in just a moment, is prevented from hunting when you use a smudge for 90 seconds, unless it's a spirit, in which case it'll be prevented from hunting for three minutes. All right. Portuguese, the easiest way to identify this is it throws. All right. So outside of the hunt, uh, it has a higher chance to throw things about every like 0.5 seconds. I'm not kidding. It will throw a lot more frequently during a hunt. If you put a bunch of stuff on, like for instance, we're on Tanglewood right now. So if I take uh, this uh, this nice long juicy cock here, hold up, wait a minute, and I go and I put it here on the island, which is where I like to uh, take the ghost for a loop, uh, which I can do a guide on looping the ghost as well. But uh, basically, if it's a poltergeist and you loop it around the the island, it will basically clear off this whole island, all the stuff that can be uh, picked up. So like this magazine will stay, the bread box will stay, but you can put the potato in here oh. and it'll it'll clear this off. All right. The other thing, too, is like every ghost can throw. Right. But the poltergeist will throw things much further and higher than every other ghost. Easiest way to identify a mare. The mare doesn't like lights. OK, if you turn the light on and it immediately turns off, Within seconds of you turning it on, it is 100% a mare. The other way to easily rule it out is if the ghost turns the light on, immediately reel out the mare, okay? Because a mare can't do that. It can only turn the lights off. Moving on, the demon. There's no real easy way to identify the demon, aside from the fact that it is the only ghost in the game that can hunt you at 100% sanity. So if you walk into a contract and the ghost immediately starts hunting, I'm talking about a hunt, not a ghost event. It is 100% a demon because naturally the demon hunts at 70% sanity, but it has an ability where it can hunt you at any sanity. The other way to tell that it's uh, a demon is if you smudge the ghost and it is prevented from hunting for 60 seconds. So if you smudge it and then immediately 60 seconds after you use your smudge, it starts hunting, it is 100% a demon. The yokai is a little bit of a harder ghost to identify because it doesn't really have any special abilities. The only thing is, is it normally hunts at 50% sanity, but if you're talking near it, it can hunt you at 80% sanity, all right? I guess the easiest way to identify it is while it's hunting you, it will have a shorter detection radius. So for instance, if the ghost is in here, right, and you're talking or you have your flashlight on and you're in the garage, most ghosts will come to your location, but the yokai is very stupid. It's got a detection radius of two and a half meters rather than the usual five, I think. If it's having a hard time finding your location, it's more than likely a yokai. Moving on to the myling. The myling, the easiest way to identify the myling is during a hunt. And that is if the ghost footsteps are quieter than the ghost noise it makes, it is 100% a myling. The raiju, easiest way to identify Ride you is that it likes electronics, all right? Outside of the height, it doesn't really do anything special, but if it comes into contact with electronics, so if I leave my flashlight on on the ground, right, and the ride you's hunting you, it'll be like normal speed, and then once it gets close to the flashlight or any electronic that is on, it will like immediately speed up. Like it'll go from like normal speed to like, I forget the actual number, but it'll be a very noticeable change. Most ghosts will like gradually speed up over time. The Raiju, once it comes into contact with an electronic, it will fly, bro. Um, the Moroi, all right? Uh, I wanna do the Moroi and the Thay together, okay? Uh, because these two ghosts, whenever I'm at zero sanity, they are very hard to differentiate between 
because they're both very fast. The only difference is that the Moroi, your sanity dictates its speed. So I think it hunts at 50% sanity, but once you hit 30% sanity, it starts speeding up. And the lower your sanity is, the faster it gets. The only difference between the Moroi and the Thay is that at 0% sanity, the Thay and the Moroi are about the same speed. How to tell if it's either a Moroi or a Thay is the Thay does not speed up. The thing you gotta know is that if you get a hunt, and it's kind of fast, and then you don't take any sanity pills, you drain your sanity more, and the next time it's even faster, it is 100% a Moroi. The Wraith, super easy goes to identify, bro. All you need is some salt. If it doesn't step in salt, it is 100% a Wraith. On the opposite, if the ghost does step in salt, you can immediately rule out uh, a Wraith, okay? One thing I'll touch on, Wraith, Phantom, Banshee are all teleporting ghosts, meaning they are more prone to come to your location and do a ghost event and follow you around the map and do ghost events right near you, all right? Um, another way with, with teleporting ghosts is if you walk into the map, and like the ghost room is like the room where the front door is, you can start leaning more towards these three ghosts, the Phantom, Wraith, and Banshee, all right? Wraith is a teleporting ghost, Banshee is a teleporting ghost, um, but there's no real easy way to identify a Banshee outside of using a paramic, in which case you will get a Banshee scream, which it's a very obvious paranormal sound on the paramic. <laughs> Revenant is super easy to identify during a hunt, because it doesn't really have any abilities outside of a hunt, but uh, the way the, the Revenant works is when it doesn't see you while it's hunting, it'll be very slow. And then the second it detects you talking or your equipment, it'll be like, do, 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 do. so that's the Revenant. It's also very, very terrifying because of how fast it is and how fast it can become. Yurei loves doors. They love door, door things, okay? It is the only ghost that can shut the front door without doing a ghost event. Um, but the telltale giveaway for Yure is if you have a, like a, the tier three EMF is like perfect for this, but if it touches the door in rapid succession, it'll basically sound like um, two door touches like back to back happening at the same time. And then what'll happen with the Yure ability is it will basically slam the door shut. That's pretty much it. The Hantu will never be able to turn the breaker on because its ability is contingent upon the breaker. The breaker has to be off for the Hantu to do its ability, meaning um, it, to be faster and to do its freezing breath. But the thing you gotta know about the Hantu to make it easy to identify is that it will never turn on the breaker, it will never turn on the breaker, and while it's hunting you, it will not speed up the longer it sees you like every other ghost. It will speed up slowly, like ever so slightly, but that is because the Hantu is dropping the temperature of the room that you're in, and the, the colder the temperature of the room, the faster the Hantu is, okay? Onryo is a little bit difficult, but the easiest way I can tell you with the Onryo, the Onryo is A, if you have a lit candle and a crucifix, and the candle's lit, and it uses the crucifix instead of blowing out the candle, you can 100% rule out an Onryo. The other way to tell is if you have a candle and it blows it out three times and it does not hunt, it is 100% not an Onryo. The Obake is a shapeshifter and it doesn't like to show fingerprints, all right? So if it does show fingerprints, there's two things you gotta know. It can leave a special fingerprint where it'll have like a six digit fingerprint like this, like where you got another finger, right? Um, the other thing too is that if it does leave a fingerprint, the Obake has an ability where it can uh, shorten the fingerprint duration uh, by half. The other, and probably the easiest way to identify that it's an Obake is if it's chasing you and you see it change into a different ghost model for a split second, it is 100% an Obake. The Diogen, I love Diogens, man. They are, they're great. I love them because they're so easy to survive during a hunt because what the Diogen is, is opposite of the Revenant. So the Revenant is slow whenever it doesn't see you and extremely fast when it does see you. The Diogen is opposite, all right? It is extremely fast whenever it doesn't see you, so it sounds terrifying, but if it gets to say where this, where the edge of this island is, it will start to slow down significantly to the point where you can literally do circles around the, the Diogen, all right? The thing you gotta know about the Diogen is if you're dealing with it during a hunt, never back yourself into a corner. 
second thing you got to know during a hunt with the Diogen is you cannot hide from the Diogen because it always knows your location. All right. It even says so in the journal. All right. But I love Diogens. The other thing about the Diogen is that there is a very rare, like a 2% chance of happening, uh, spirit box response that you can get if you're right on top of the ghost. It just turned out the breaker. How I know the ghost did that is the light switch is still on. That's how I know. Up, oh, and it's a mare. No, it's uh, it's an airball event. Very good. Okay, so let's turn the breaker back on. Which brings me, uh, I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. That leads me to my next my next point. Right? It's not a gin because the easiest way to rule out a gin is that the gin will never be able to turn off the breaker. The Haunted will never be able to turn the breaker on. The gin will never be able to turn the breaker off. Okay, so that's how I know it is not a gin. Second thing that just happened right there, which will bring me to another ghost, is the Oni. It just did an airball ghost event, right? It turned out the light and I couldn't see it, but there was a ball of mist that came to my location and hit me. The Oni will never be able to do an airball ghost event like that, okay? The other way to identify an Oni while I'm talking about it, it will blink a lot more during a hunt, meaning from my understanding, blinking equates to visibility. If it's blinking a lot more, it'll be a lot more visible during a hunt. So most of the, most of the ghosts will like blink like four times and then be invisible for like a second. The Oni, I, I think, blinks a lot more and stays invisible for a lot shorter period, okay? Phantom. Easiest way to identify slash rule out a phantom, all right? To identify it is if it if it shows itself and you take a photo of it and then you go in your, your photo section of your journal and you get a three-star ghost photo, but there's no ghost, it's 100% a phantom. Uh, the other way to easily identify it, which is easier for me, is during a hunt. Because unlike the Oni that will be more visible and more blinky, the phantom will blink a lot less. It'll be a lot more invisible during a hunt. Um, so they're very hard to survive against. Uh, they're very hard to survive against um, in a uh, during a hunt because they're less visible, right? So it's uh, it's a bit challenging. But this ghost is following me around doing ghost events, so I don't know. Could could be a teleporting ghost. But yeah, so that's the phantom. Let's cover the shade now. The shade is kind of hard to identify except for if you've been in a contract for a very long time and the ghost is genuinely doing nothing um it's more than likely a shade because shade cannot do a ghost event at a hundred percent sanity it's very inactive uh and the longer you're in the contract i guess like the more active it will become but most of the times if you're in a contract for a long period of time and the ghost really isn't doing a lot of ghost events or interactions or anything like that it is more than likely a shade the easiest way to identify the shade though is if you have cursed possessions like the music box and the summoning circle. The shade will always, well, not always, but it has a higher chance of interacting with the music box and the summoning circle by appearing as a shadow rather than a full-on ghost. Gorio, easiest way to identify the Gorio is that it never changes ghost rooms. It'll never change ghost rooms. Other than that, it's a pretty boring ghost. The other way to tell that you're dealing with... Okay, read redeemed a ghost sound if you, uh, in case you got caught off guard right there uh one of my twitch chat channel point redemptions is sounds from the game phasmo so i have a door i've got an air ball i've got a ghost sound and uh apparently reed doing that has triggered the ghost to hunt so thanks reed appreciate you hello okay so right now the ghost is hunting where are you it is a phantom you see what i'm saying you see how invisible it is it's very hard to win against a phantom because that's how you know you're dealing with a phantom right there. He does, it's not, you can't see it, man. So you really gotta use your ears on that. But uh, anyways, so that backs up when I'm talking about the phantom, all right? But the twins, all right, the twins. So they like to interact in multiple places at the exact same time. So for instance, if you get a plate throw in here and then a half second later over in this far bedroom, you hear something being thrown, it's 100% the twins. The other way is, like I said, it is slightly faster or slightly slower the normal speed whenever it's hunting but for sure if you uh if you get like a cup thrown in the kitchen on tanglewood and then in the uh jesus christ bro um and then immediately after that in the far bedroom you hear another interaction you can 100 know that you're dealing with the twins okay there's no real easy way to rule out 
the twins either it's just easy to identify all right the mimic is very easy to identify because it is the only ghost in the game that has four evidences all right the fourth one is unofficial right um because every ghost will only have three evidences that you can select however the mimic will always have ghost orbs all right the mimic only has uv uh spirit box and freezing all right so if you get those three and then you get orbs on top of that it is 100 percent a mimic uh, the Mimic can do every single ghost ability in the game, but it changes every 60 seconds. So for instance, one hunt, you might have a phantom, right? Where it's like being invisible like this, right? And then another 60 seconds later, it might change into a Yure where it does the, the Yure ghost ability or the Yure door ability. Um, and then another hunt, it might mimic into a Deogen, you know, etc. So, but the, the quickest way to identify a Mimic is by the orbs, all right? The Thay, I kind of mentioned this with the with the Moroi, but the Thay is very fast. It hunts at 75% sanity, and early on, it is very, very, very fast. The only way to differentiate between this, uh, the Thay, and the Moroi is the Thay cannot speed up the longer that it sees you. So it will be fast, but the longer it the longer you loop it, it's not going to speed up. The other thing you got to know is if, if you get a hunt with a Thay early on, like a young Thay, the Thay ages every two minutes uh, the player is in the ghost room with it. So you might get a hunt and then spend some time in the ghost room for, let's say, four minutes, right? The next time the Thay hunts, it'll be slower than it was before. So let's see if we're actually dealing with a phantom instead of a mimic here. Hello, ghost. But yeah, so that's all you got to know. But the Thay will always check for a player every two minutes to see if it's nearby. And if it is... It will uh, it will drop in age, meaning it'll become less aggressive and it'll be slower on the next hunts. Hello, hello, ghost. Yoo hoo! Well, that's very creepy. Okay, well, uh, I'm gonna say it is a phantom. That is how to easily identify and or rule out all 24 ghosts. So now what we're gonna do, now that we know we're dealing with a phantom here, I'm gonna go ahead and try to go for a perfect game as well. So we're gonna grab our salt here. It's hunting again. I don't have a smudge. A little bit spicy. Oh, I'm fucking dead, bro. I'm fucking dead. I'm fucking dead. I'm fucking dead. I'm fucking dead. Uh... Oh my god. Jesus Christ. So the funny thing is, is even though Phantom is a teleporting ghost. It's still easy to be outsmarted. I almost died right there, bro. I almost died. Okay, uh, so we need a smudge stick. And it's stepped in the salt, so that further validates that it's not a wraith. Let's go take our sanity pills, shall we? Our last two sanity pills, because I'm probably at 0% sanity. So I could smudge the ghost as well. Yeah, we're really low, bro. But we need to get... Uh, we need to get a perfect game here, so we need to detect with a motion sensor and prevent the ghost from hunting. I'm going to put that salt back, and then I'll come back out. I need to smudge the ghost. It's probably going to hunt whenever I walk in. It just it touched the car, so we're going to go do that. Uh, it's starting the hunt from in here. So set that up right there, and then we need this. Okay, it immediately detected it, I think. Yep, so now we just need to prevent a ghost from hunting. So let's go grab our camera, and I'll give you a bonus tip on how to get an easy, perfect game at this time of recording because right now they haven't patched this but this is like the easiest way to get a perfect game you want to get all of your salt right put it in a pile and then take nine photos i don't have any any photos i could also take a photo of the ghost and go from there so i'm gonna put this in here hello ghost can you give me a sign can you show yourself you stinky let's find the curse possession as well See, watch. Oh, no, you were, you weasel. All right, so that, that sound indicates that I've been hit by the ghost event. And because this is a teleporting ghost. It has changed ghost rooms. I think we got a photo of the ghost. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. Ah, oh, it killed me, you stinker. I didn't get a photo of the ghost. That's okay. It's hard to do it during a hunt, but yeah. So anyways, 
No perfect game, but that's okay. That wasn't the point of this video. This point of the video was, uh, was to give you guys a quick guide or a guide on how to quickly identify and or rule out all 24 ghosts. But it was a phantom because of the blinking. That's how we were able to ident easily identify. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you. If it did, leave me a comment down below. I would greatly appreciate it. Also, again, hit the like if you liked this video. Give me a thumbs down if you didn't. Uh, if you want to find your way back for more content, you can hit the subscribe button. Also, if you want to come check me out live, I am recording this live on stream right now. I stream about uh, almost every day at 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, the link for that is down below, okay? So nonetheless, wow. I appreciate you. Have a good one. And uh, until next time, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and I'll catch you in the next one, all right?